You know what's really a shame? It kind of just grinds my gears. When big successful companies get lazy about their marketing. Now Wayfair is a cool company. They sell cool stuff. I get it. But when I see people wasting their marketing dollars, it just mm, makes me mad. That's why in this video, I'm going to break down the huge marketing mistake I noticed that they were making so you can know how you can avoid it no matter how big your business is. Let's get started. <laughs> So the story begins late one night when I was jonesing for a couch on Pinterest. I was doing a little like couch surfing, well not couch surf, I was like surfing on Pinterest looking at couches, right? I was like, mmm, cool couch. Ooh, I like that couch. Ooh, I like that couch. So I found one on the Wayfair website. I clicked, I wanted to check it out, right? So here's what happened. Click. Well, you want me to opt in? Okay, fine, I'll opt in. So I opt in. And it's like, go view this on our app. But I have to get an app? Fine, fine, I'll get the app. Oh, I'm getting like cheesed off, right? So I get this stupid app. And then it takes me to the stinking homepage. By then I've totally forgotten what couch I was even looking at in the first place. And I was like, okay, thanks, bye. You guys, have you not heard of the tried and true principle called the path of least resistance? If you haven't, look it up because it makes a difference in your marketing, okay? This is a problem with selling system number two. As you might recall, I always talk about my four selling systems, strangers into friends, friends into leads, leads into buyers, buyers into repeat buyers, yeah? System two is turning friends into leads. Okay, so I had seen their content before. I was somewhat familiar with the brand. So you could say I was a friend. I was comfortable with it. I had some element of trust, okay? So then I was about to become a lead, but they asked for it in the total wrong way. It was like they put this gate in front of it and it was like, I just wanted to see the couch. I wasn't trying to get like educated about couches. I wasn't, I mean, maybe if they had like a freebie that was like a cool checklist, I would have wanted to opt in for that. But it wasn't even that. It was like, you can't see this unless you give us your email. And there was like no good reason. It was just yucky. It was a yucky experience. It was like, Poof. and the only reason, honestly, the only reason I entered my email was because I wanted to see what happened next. And of course, then what happened next was they made me get a stupid app. And I was like, I don't want your app Wayfair. Like, I just want to, I just want to see the couch. And I get it. If somebody clicks through to your site, you want to convert them into a lead. That's a perfectly acceptable thing to do, but you got to do it right, guys. If I were them, I would do what smart companies do. I would pixel me, baby. Thanks to the wonders of modern technology, you can actually track the action somebody takes on your website. You can track the specific page of the specific couch that I wanted to buy. And then you could show me that same couch over on Facebook later that night, which is such a better thing to do than try to make me download a stinking app and get on your email list that I'm never going to look at for as long as I live, you know? Getting an email address is all well and good and I get why they would want to do it, but you don't want to force it. It's kind of like you're on a blind date, you're on a first date with somebody and like five minutes into the conversation, they're like, okay, so I need to know where this is going because I have places to be. I'm going to need a commitment right now. And you're like, um, okay, what? These are the things you have to think about if you want to be a solid marketer. You have to put yourself in the prospect's shoes and think about what they're thinking about at that stage in the customer journey. I would suggest that they use the pixel to retarget me with a carousel ad that shows me that couch among other couches like it so I could compare and they would be the obvious choice because they showed that they considered my needs and desires and they had they wanted to take my experience to the next level that's what i wanted them to do if they really really wanted my email address then a better way to do it might be let me see the page like take me to the couch page that i thought i was going to go to and then if I spend a certain amount of time on that page that suggests that I'm really considering it, then maybe at that time do a pop-up that says, want us to let you know if there's a special deal on this couch or if it goes on sale, enter your email. In that case, I might've been quite happy to give them my email address. So here's what this means for you. As you're planning your marketing strategy, always consider the path of least resistance. Always put yourself in the prospect's shoes and think about how would I want this to be marketed to me if I were the one considering buying it? The whole purpose of a sales funnel and why people teach it is that it's supposed to remove friction from the customer journey. It's supposed to make it very clear and very easy and very flowing so that the person can go through it and every step in the process feels like the next logical step and they're excited to take it. That's what we want to create in our people, yeah? And it just makes you oh, just drives me crazy. How many millions of dollars do these people spend every year on marketing and they're being so dumb? It's just downright wasteful. Contrast this with my garage door repair guy. Comes to fix our garage the other day, puts his business card right there underneath the button. That's all he needed to do. 
I think that, which was practically free, was a better marketing job than Wayfair, who spent how many, I don't know, how many millions of dollars figuring out their marketing strategy. That's intuitive, right? It's like, when will I be thinking about this? What will I be thinking? What information will I need? How will I take, you know what I mean? Like just he thought about it and that's all you have to do is think about it. You know what I'm saying guys? My garage door repair guy knows exactly how to rock his system for turning buyers into repeat buyers. At the end of the day, you wanna have a plan and a repeatable systematic process for doing all those four things. That's my goal for you. If you'd like a whole lot more detail about how to set those four selling systems up, then I strongly recommend that you go check out the free training at bit.ly forward slash four selling systems. Until then, you stay nerdy and get back to work because somebody out there is looking for you and it's your job to make sure they find you. There's a lot of stuff I don't know, but there's one thing I know for sure. Somebody out there, probably a lot of somebody's, they're looking for somebody just like you right now because they need exactly the type of thing that you have to offer. The question is, how do we make sure they find you? Well, that really depends on you. Let's figure it out together, shall we? Hop on over to the strategy generator at makesuretheyfindyou.com, answer three quick questions, and I'll tell you exactly where to start and exactly what's gonna need to happen for you to get your perfect offer in front of the perfect people as soon as today. See you on the other side. But before you go check that out, I want you to know that all my content is inspired by you guys. So make sure to leave me a comment because I really do wanna know. If I could make a video that would solve your biggest problem with marketing or with mindset right now, what would that video be about? My team will put your suggestion on my list and we'll make sure to let you know if your idea gets featured. Until then, stay nerdy and I'll talk to you soon.